Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, this is uh, Professor Y.K. Gupta. I will be talking today on a very important and very common disorder in all age groups and that is diarrhea and the another is uh, related to same system is constipation which is very problematic particularly in old age and how these two symptoms or disease conditions can be treated and one can feel better. Now if I just talk on diarrhea, so first of all what is diarrhea? And the definition of diarrhea is passage of abnormally liquid or unformed stool is diarrhea at a more frequency. So what is diarrhea? If the stool consistency becomes less, frequency becomes more than the normal, then this is called as a diarrhea. WHO defines diarrhea as passage of three or more loose stool or liquid stool per day, then this is called as diarrhea. Now diarrhea can be acute diarrhea which is if it is lasting for less than two weeks still this is called as acute diarrhea. It can be because of the disease, it can be because of infection, because of any side effect. It can be persistent diarrhea and persistent diarrhea is referred when the, the disease or diarrhea lasts more than 2 weeks to 4 weeks. And chronic diarrhea when the duration is more than 4 weeks particularly in irritable bowel syndrome or maybe in sometimes other conditions. So the causes of diarrhea is important to know because that will determine the strategy for management and you see the cause is, is infectious and it can be non-infectious. Infectious diarrhea is when there is a causative organism and very common in India is rotavirus which is one of the commonest uh, virus in children, in infants and norovirus and coronavirus and you may be knowing that India has led the discovery of indigenously rotavirus vaccine which has been now introduced into the national health program also. Bacteria causing diarrhea are E. coli, Campylobacter, Sigella, Salmonella and Clostridium difficile. Now these are the common bacteria which cause diarrhea. Protozoal diarrhea which is quite common in India primarily because of the poor hygienic condition is amoebic diarrhea or because of ant amoeba histolytica, giardia or the common infection or mixed infection where ant amoeba, giardia and cyclospira all are present. Now these infectious diarrhea, viral, bacteria or protozoal are sometimes mixed. There may be vi viral component, there may be bacterial component and there may be protozoal component also. 
Now, naturally, when there is an infectious diarrhea, it is good to identify the cause and treat accordingly. Whereas, the non infectious diarrhea is a large possibility of uh, diarrhea. That is, one is the common is the what is called as a antibiotic associated diarrhea as a result of adverse drug reaction of antibiotics because the bacterial flora gets disturbed and which leads to diarrhea. Cytotoxic drugs, most of the chemotherapeutic drug, anti cancer drugs, they cause diarrhea as a side effect. Laxatives, if you take excessive drug for constipation, then this can cause diarrhea. Toxins, particularly organophosphate. And if you just remember the cholinergic crisis, because there is a excessive acetylcholine into the intestinal tract, inorganophosphate poison or toxins, this causes spasmodic contraction of the intestine and causes loose diarrhea. So much so that diarrhea is a cardinal sign of organophosphate poisoning. Hyperthyroidism. One of the feature of hyperthyroid, hyperthyroidism is anxiety, palpitation, tremors and diarrhea. Hormone producing tumors particularly carcinoid syndrome, the diarrhea is a very common feature. Lactulose and other deficiencies, inflammatory bowel disease is one of the lifestyle disease today and also autoimmune disease in which there is a diarrhea, there is a constipation, diarrhea, constipation and maybe alteration of diarrhea and constipation. And this is sometimes called as a diarrhea predominant IBS, constipation predominant IBS. And lastly, when there is a short bowel syndrome, when you, you do bowel resection, you cut down some bowel and then the bowel becomes small, you cut down and that leads to diarrhea. Now, these are the non infectious diarrhea. Naturally, when there is a non infectious diarrhea, giving an antimicrobial agent will be a useless, rather over exposing medication to situation where it is not required. What could be the treatment or management of diarrhea that depends on what is the likely infection and what is the likely non infectious? If it is diarrhea is likely infection, then you treat with antimicrobial agents, antiviral agents. If it is likely non infectious agent, then you treat symptomatically. So, if it is diarrhea, in any case, the first management is fluid resuscitation and oral hydration therapy by or by intravenous fluid. One must see that if the diarrhea there is a sign of dehydration, you pinch the skin and then it goes back. That is called as a skin pinch test and if there is a sign of dehydration by in eye sockets, then the immediate thing is that you give rehydration. And the first thing is oral rehydration therapy and if the situation is serious, then fluid replacement by intravenous fluid. And if it is say infectious, then appropriate antimicrobial therapy. And if it is a non infectious, then treatment of underlying cause and then give anti motility drug and anti secretory agents which will reduce the GI motility. Oral rehydration therapy, each and every person should know. And this contains primarily glucose, sodium chloride, potassium chloride and sodium citrate. Sodium citrate is given because ultimately sodium citrate is converted into sodium bicarbonate and this takes care of possible acidosis. Initial formula used to have sodium bicarbonate, but then it had a short self life and therefore sodium citrate is used as an oral rehydration therapy. This is the typical composition of uh, oral rehydration therapy, glucose, 
sodium chloride potassium and citrate and this leads to osmolality of 245 and this is called as a low osmolar ORS. If this is an specific organism then antimicrobial therapy is given and this depends on pathogenic organism. No antimicrobial for viral diarrhea should be given. This is important because in India majority of the private practitioners are irrational prescription they give antimicrobial agents in any case of diarrhea without understanding if the antimicrobial agent is required or not and that leads to antimicrobial resistance and unnecessarily loading the patient with the antimicrobial agent. Usually gram negative bacteria which cause uh, diarrhea, fluoroquinolones are the drug of choice and cotrimoxazole and azithromycin are other drugs which are effective. Clostridia difficile, vancomycin and metronidazole and stop other antibiotics because uh, other antibiotics are not effective except these two antimicrobial agents. If the diarrhea is specifically because of protozoal infection there is a no point of giving antibiotic but the drug which is effective is metronidazole and diloxonide furate. The metronidazole is a very commonly given in India because uh, large population suffers from protozoal infection. The major problem or the side effect of metronidazole is the metallic taste and that indicates that there is a sufficient quantity of metronidazole in the body. Antimicrobial therapy rational use is no antimicrobial for viral diarrhea. This is uh, repeatedly hammered to all rational therapeutics that do not give unnecessarily antimicrobial agents in diarrhea which are non uh, uh, pathogenic and irrational fixed dose combination commonly used for bacterial dysentery. The Indian market is considered to be the capital of fixed dose combination and a fixed dose combination large number of fixed dose combination have been considered irrational and have recently been banned. Metronidazole and norfloxacin is a questionable combination. Norfloxacin plus metronidazole plus zinc acetate is again a popular combination but it has no rationality. The other group of drugs that factors affecting GI motility and secretions that is a primary to give symptomatic relief. One is increased motility and secretion that is parasympathetic serotonin and prostaglandin. These are the agents which increase GI motility and decreased motility is a sympathetic opioids and somatostatin. Now that is why if there is a you want to decrease gastric motility you give opioid you give sympathetic agent and if there is a decreased motility and you want to increase motility give parasympathetic agents serotonin and prostaglandin. Now the anti diarrheal agents the anti motility agents the drugs which increase the which reduces the motility because in GI tract if motility is reduced the frequency of uh, stool will be less and the absorption of fluid will be more and therefore consistency of the stool will be more. Opioid agonist loperamide diphenoxylate in combination with atropine is very commonly used but these are reserved for serious and severe diarrhea. Anti secretory agents bismuth subsalicate anticholinergic are used primarily for the diarrhea which predominant 
directly seen in irritable bowel syndrome. Clonidine is used primarily for diarrhea in diabetes. In diabetes there is also diarrhea and this diarrhea is usually responds better to clonidine which is uh, an alpha agonist drug. Then octreotide is carcinoid tumor secreting serotonin, bile acid sequestrants these are also used as anti secretory agents. The anti motility agents used in infectious diarrhea if inappropriately used may lead to lethargy, paralyticus ileus, toxic megacolon, CNS depression, coma and even death. Unfortunately, when there is diarrhea you do not want to reduce the motility unnecessarily because if it is secreting toxins, it is excreting toxin they should not be given. In that case use of in infectious diarrhea it should never be done. Anti motility agents in infectious diarrhea is contraindicated. It may lead to paralyticus ileus, it may lead to toxic megacolon and recently banned fixed dose combination in, in India are anti microbial and anti motility agent. Now, uh -huh. you must understand at if, if at one hand you are giving anti microbial agent and on one hand you are giving anti motility agent that means the microbes are not being expelled out they are being accumulated retained in the stomach and the intestinal tract and so they are acting on both on the reverse direction. So, this is also furazolidine, metronazole and loperamide. So, this is looks very effective combination because you are giving loperamide as a intestinal motility reducing agent as well as a furazolidine and metronazole as antimicrobial agents and antiprotozole agents, but if you just see in totality they are acting on the reverse direction. So, this is not a rational combination. Opioid receptor antagonist they are also used in diarrhea decreases intestinal motility mu receptor and decreases intestinal secretion alpha is a delta opioid receptor. Opioid drugs with less CNS penet penetration are preferred. So, the opioid agonist which are primarily mu receptor and which are acting on the alpha on delta opioid receptors and have less CNS penetration are preferred. The drug is loperamide which is almost 40 times more potent than morphine as anti diarrheal agent is used. Diphenoxylate plus atropine is also used, but then atropine is used in a sub therapeutic dose so that there is a less of the anti cholinergic side effects and these are not recommended for use in children younger than 2 years because of severe possibility of severe side effects. Resicadrotil is a relatively new drug inhibits encephalinase enzyme and therefore endogenous encephalin in the intestine is increased which again acting on the mu receptor and delta receptor acts as anti diarrheal and anti secretory agent. Encaphalins endogenous opioid act as a mu receptors and inhibit intestinal secretion without affecting motility indicated in acute diarrhea. We have been taking probiotic for ages and now like curd and things like that. Now of that probiotics are what are probiotics are live microorganisms that are intended to have health benefits have shown some degree of benefit in acute diarrheal condition. Antibiotic associated diarrhea particularly if I ask you what is the drug of choice or the management in antibiotic associated diarrhea and perhaps the role of probiotics is justified. And the probiotics 
several combination of probiotics are available. Commonly used probiotics are lactobacillus GG and bifidobacterium and saccharomyces boulard D. These are the species. As I said, irritable bowel syndrome are two type. One is a diarrhea predominant, other is a constipation predominant. And in diarrhea predominant IBS, there is a functional bowel disorder, no structural abnormality. And in this, anticholinergics are the drug of choice. And anticholinergic drugs, dicyclamine and hyoscyamine, glycopyrrolol and otilonium bromide. This is additional calcium and blocking and NK receptor blocking agent. So, these are anticholinergics used in IBS. IBS is a condition which is difficult to treat and these are the drugs which have been shown to be of benefit. The another drug is eluxodine, mixed opioid receptor agonist and delta opioid antagonist and K kappa opioid receptor agonist and this causes and also tricyclic antidepressants used as diarrhea in IBS. So, if I conclude the drugs in diarrhea, you can say that the diarrhea can be infectious diarrhea, diarrhea can be non-infectious diarrhea. If there is infectious diarrhea, treated with antiviral, antibacterial, antiprotozoal drug. If this is a non-infectious diarrhea, then you have to treat it with oral supplementation by ORS or IV replacement of fluid. Anti-motility drug, anti-motility drugs can be of two type primarily. One is the anticholinergic drugs. Anticholinergic drugs means anti-atropine or atropine-like drugs and which have less peripheral side effects which I mentioned the list of drugs and the other drug is opioid type of drug and sometimes the anticholinergic and opioid drugs are combined. If there is an infectious diarrhea giving anti motility drug is not recommended because this will act in a different mechanism and this will allow retention of more bacteria for longer duration which will be disastrous. The most common in traveler's diarrhea or in India, the diarrhea which is a non-specific, sometimes because of tension or because of irritable bowel syndrome. In that case, antidepressants are also effective. Irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea specific, anticholinergics are better. And if it is a diarrhea because of uh, because of severe anxiety, sometimes anti-anxiety drugs have also been found to be useful. Thank you.